Hey guys, Mitko here from DN Models and today we are unpacking European tram car by MiniArt, kit number 38009. This tram car is sold as a standalone model but actually features several kits inside. Besides the fact that we have very thick box, nothing shows that we have a bunch of goodies inside and if you are not following previous MiniArt releases, you will most likely won't notice that fact. With this kit we have a lot of options, differing mostly by the main tram color and the ads combinations over it. The kit features tram crew and passengers usually sold separately, street accessories and base, tram support and poles, and the modest for this kit total number of 810 parts. I am saying small because the size of the box is pretty impressive and for that number of parts things somehow doesn't add up at first glance. This is some sort of an illusion though, because the tram is very complex and abundant in detail plastic model. Opening the box we can find a single envelope which holds the spruce. Many consider this approach as a letdown, but there is no other practical way of packing all those spruce in acceptably large box. With this kit we don't have photo etch, but we have a lot of clear plastic and many challenges that goes hand in hand with those. A lot of the interior is visible, doors are positionable, and a lot of prep work will be needed on pretty much every stage when building this kit. There are 9 different options for painting the tram, bright colors mostly. They differ by the ads and you can do more changing the different commercials or combining them in your own way. The vehicles shown are mostly from 30s and 40s and that can guide you while picking the right commercials and the correct way of showing the model. If you search through the web, you will most likely find some of these built as partially or totally damaged dioramas, which is also a great way to represent the atmosphere of the particular period. I personally prefer the bright colors, since they make this kit distinguishable, especially among most of the grim war subjects from that era that most of us are building. You are not restricted from building this as part of a war scene of course, if you choose that theme as well. The instruction sheet is what we are used to get from MiniArt. It is clear and easily understandable. It features rather complicated building process, but the instruction follow-up somehow eases the process. There are some sections that are very easy to be built, but they are followed by more complex ones, for example, the parts where many windows are to be placed. Those windows are big, and you have to deal with extreme caution if you want uh, your kit to look decent. Bigger windows means that all of your interior will be visible, which means more work on the inside of the tram. That requires careful painting and weathering, and a lot of masking when you are preparing for paint stages. There are quite large number of fiddly parts and also positionable doors, which can cause some frustration during the assembly and painting processes. This kit is not suitable for beginner modelers and will be challenging for experienced ones too. There is no other way around such a project though, since this features many additional work due to the big windows, different materials to be replicated and the urban weathering, which is not such a popular subject among modelers. A notable quality of this tram kit is the suspension and the detailing of the tram cart. This is something that will please many train modelers for sure. It isn't that complicated part of the vehicle per se, but it is very nicely done and can be made in a way that will allow the viewer to see beneath the tram car and enjoy the view of the bottom part of that train-like model. Tram bottoms feature specific weathering too, which will be one more plus for that kit in terms of challenging your modeling skills. The top of the vehicle where all the electricity system is taking energy from is another different part. It features parts which are thin and hopefully flexible enough with the new plastic material that MiniArt are using for more than a year already. 
Here the weathering is less than what we have on the bottom, but as many of the fellow train mullers know, different kind and various skills will be needed here too. I know only of one more company that makes civilian tram similar to this one, which makes this kit very interesting and rare piece. Alongside all of the detail you just saw in the instructions, we have poles, street accessories and of course people that we can easily turn into one nice diorama and all of this is packed inside one single box. Abundant set of posters, newspapers and commercials are featured too in the end of the instructions, most notable being Coca-Cola, Martini and Persil, brands that you probably have heard of. Everything ends with a guide for painting the figurines properly, with table for all the paints that you might need depending on which paint supplier you have nearby you. The first proofs I'm going to show you are the clear ones. Usually in 35th scale, sprues like that are overlooked except when it comes down to helicopter models. In this case here though, we have something very specific and they here are of great importance. As you can see, they are pretty clear and without unrealistic magnifying effects. The parts are a bit flimsy on the sprues, but they are also attached very delicately and any potential damaging wouldn't be a problem. First plastic sprue I want to share is sprue B. It holds some of the front and back parts clearly showing the profile of the vehicle. Other parts can be seen here, most of them with very good texture. Some of the flat surfaces are missing such texture and this can be dealt with using thicker primer or more additional coats of thin primer if you are using such. This goes only for the flat surfaces and not for the ones that are designed with texture and curves. Then we have four sprues of the street accessories. We have the same high quality moldings here, no flash, no tricky attachment points. The bench tiny metal rods are replicated perfectly and in scale and everything is flexible enough to spare you any troubles. These parts of the kit are optional. You can build your tram without them if you like. Next, two more sprues, this time with poles. Same thing here as the ones we've just seen with accessories on them. What I find particularly interesting with those parts from Mini Art is the fact that the round parts are with almost no flash at all. Small and tiny hooks, metal rods and everything delicate is extremely finely crafted by both designers and producers. Then we have four sprues of type E. These are part of the suspension of the tram that I mentioned when we looked at the instruction sheet. Here we can find wheels, springs and many many tiny and delicate items which, if it wasn't for the new plastic material that MiniArt is giving us, would have been an impossible build. Again, we have super engineering and even better execution of the plastic parts here. Absolutely useless is to change any of those with metal or resin parts, since we have more than enough details. Then we have sprue EA with some springs and parts from the powering system of the vehicle. Those I found to be exceptional in quality and very very good flexibility. Accidentally I tested one of them and it survived pretty nasty bending force. The springs are also great and I can assure you about them from using such details on Mini Arts D7. Then we have two equal combo sprues. By combo I mean three sprues attached into one bigger one. Some larger parts here, some of which unfortunately lacking texture again. Very good work on the station boards which are built on the rotating principle. I found the attachment point to be one too many for most of the parts, but in order to keep a good molding quality this is necessary. I bet most of you have seen this problem in Dragon models, especially the wheels. Another nice part here is the bench very realistically looking piece of plastic. 
wonderful details designed to be textured from both sides. Then we have two more sprues that are doubled. They represent some of the suspension parts here as well as some of the longer plastic details that need space on the sprue. Superb riveting with all kinds of them differing in size and appearance. Here we can also find smaller details with the same quality and design precisions as on the previous sprues seen in the video. Good impression one can get from the longer parts which somehow are with straight lines or at least alongside most of their length. Even with the single envelope plastic mini art somehow managed to keep everything safe and this is not just with this kit but with all of their production. As I've said in the beginning, such packing might be bothering at first, but once you get deeper into the plastic you can see that everything is perfectly preserved. Then we have more repetitive plastic, this time with the front and the back of the tram or its two fronts, whichever is more proper to be set. Also the doors, which are positionable, some springs, some bumpers and some miscellaneous parts. These are very thin and feature small riveting and wonderfully casted details. Frames here might be a problem if you're not cautious while building. They can be bent and damaged even though they look sturdy. Everything is done in such way to preserve the thickness and keep it into scale. The only thing better here would have been photo edge parts. It is not like that with all of the parts of the kit, but only with the visible and important ones. Longer parts are also with preserved geometry alongside their length here. Beautiful execution, miniature art. Then we have two sprues with the bigger parts of the frame of the tram. Corrugation is superb and presents a base for countless weathering techniques and experiments. Most of it will be visible after assembly too. Sites are very important since they require special attention and preservation of their initial form. Don't forget that these will hold the windows and you will have to do your best to keep the shape right. They are thin and delicate. The rest of the parts are with flash kept to its possible minimum, although with rather complex forms they are well detailed, it seems to be easy to be worked with. Next we have two sprues with figurines. It is important to add here that these are sold as a separate set and are some sort of a bonus that tram here. You can check out my reviews of those and similar kits of mini art figurines if you want to know more about the separate sets. What is important to know about this particular set is that the plastic is slightly different here, softer. The texture of the figurines is good with various facial expressions and nice curvatures of the clothes. There is flash over them and by many they are not considered the best option for figurines but I cannot judge here since I am not experienced with figurine modeling. It is very nice that we don't have solely passengers or solely crew but a mix of both so a complete diorama can be made with what's inside of the kit's box. Then we have vacuum form cobblestone road. It features the rails of the tram and it's a base for all that you've seen so far too. If you decide to build a diorama, this is pretty much what you will get as a size of it. You can arrange everything from the box over and still it will fit and fill the space properly. This was also present in previous tram that I reviewed for you and I found it to be very useful add-on. No compromise with the detail whatsoever. The only thing that you need to think about is hiding the sides of it since vacuum forming isn't perfect and shows some defect in the end. Next and lastly are the decals. They feature many stations and numbers of the possible routes that you might want to replicate. They also have a very beautiful color emblems, typical for the era of course. These are most likely produced by Begemot, but I am only speculated here. Whatever the origin of those is, they are not very popular with the regular modeler. I haven't heard of any specific troubles with those and we all know that there are decal lovers and decal haters. I am neither, so I honestly believe that anybody can cope with those with little effort and preparation of course. 
With that, I am wrapping up the review of this tram kit from Miniart. It is truly a superb kit. All in one box, ready for a diorama or a vignette if you want to get rid of the people like in my case. Many parts satisfactory in every way, even with the missing photo -ed sheets inside. Very different and unusual vision of 35th scale modeling. Civil vehicle, rail model, all different categories at the shows. Abstract view of the 30s and the 40s, something which is rare in the modern modeling world. And what a price, boy what a price. This kit is absolutely recommended for anybody who wants to step aside from the road well known. For anybody who wants to challenge his or hers own skills and for all tired ones. Tired from armor, gun barrels, tracks. Tired from mud, rust and shell holes. Excellent set from Miniart. Thank you for watching, I hope you found that useful. Subscribe if you did and hit the like button. Stay tuned for more and I will see you in the next one.